Hanavan. Hi, Joe. In a season like this where you don't have any preseason feedback, how much do you have to trust on everything you've learned? In, ter in terms of what, the players, myself, the coach, what are you looking at? Everything in, in terms of coaching, your players, things like that. Well, I think you always have to rely on your base and your philosophy. You know, really our practice tape is what we have to go on based on how we compete on a daily basis and the progress we see. The biggest thing we can do is monitor our own players' improvement. We know what the standard is. We explain to our players every day. They know if they've met it or not. Uh, we're very honest about the progress they're making. You know, it's not about pointing out that they did something wrong. It's, it's helping them understand how to correct it and do it right. And that's our goal on a daily basis. Pat Leonard. Hey, Joe. Hey, how, do you feel, how you doing? Uh, what do you, how do you feel about your uh, cornerback position as a whole? And what do you like about Brandon Williams, a guy you guys are expected to sign? And what do you hope to see in Kavari Russell, a guy that it sounds like you guys are going to work out? Well, Pat, I'm going to leave anybody who's not on our roster yet until something gets finalized, and then I'll speak on them freely. Um, in terms of our cornerback position, they're young and they're improving. You know, we've seen daily improvement. You know, it travels over from the individual drills to the competitive releases to the one-on-one -on -one drills to the group pass and seven-on-seven, seven, and then in the team full 11-on-11 11 11 drills. And you see on a daily basis they're improving. Listen, they're young. They're learning the speed of the game. They're learning how to handle multiples. There's going to be things that every day are new to them. You know, it's not that they make mistakes. It's that they don't have – they can't repeat mistakes. So that's our goal as coaches, get them out there, make sure they learn from their own experiences and from their other experiences of the teammates so they don't have to have a mistake as well. But I like the way they're working. They're definitely competing. Jerome, Blev, and Mike Trier do a phenomenal job with that group as a whole, you know, developing. We have a lot of, you know, leadership within that group, you know, coming from certain guys who have been here and been in the league for a few years, and they're definitely doing what they can to help the young guys. Thanks. Lombardo. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Hey, Matt, what's going on? Good, good. Hey, um, when you're in these really ultra-competitive situations, like the scrimmage on Friday, Sounds like today's practice got pretty spirited towards the end. What can you learn about a young quarterback in these situations that might even be more valuable and better than learning about him from preseason games? Well, whether it's a preseason game or practice, it's competitive situations that you really find out about your team. You know, these are professional athletes. Everybody looks good running around in their underwear, you know, but it's when the pads go on, they get popping, when it gets heated out there, when the situations get tight. That, that's when you really find out about guys. And you find out about, you know, more so when something goes wrong, how they respond. You know, so putting them in heated competition, mistakes are going to get made. You want to see how they respond to that mistake. And it's not just the coaches want to see it. All the players on the team want to see it as well because they're looking at that guy in the huddle every play. I know that he's wearing the thing, but for a kid like Daniel, who this is your first time working for him, when you have the quote-unquote live bullets flying with a pass rush and in pads and defensive backs playing press coverage and all that, what have you seen maybe from him in those settings where it is live and you got a lot of, you know, physical play on the outside of wide receiver? What have you learned about Daniel in those settings that maybe you didn't see early on in camp? Well, I think you knew the guy had a lot of toughness from just watching the tape last year. And this guy took some shots and he got up and he made mistakes. You saw him improve. He comes to work every day. So, t you know, he's committed to the team. You know, what you see from him in a heated, you know, situation like that to me is when I stand behind the huddle is, I like to see his poise. I like to see how they handle it when those bodies are collapsing at times in the pocket. I like to see how he reacts to when maybe a receiver doesn't get open right away or someone slips and falls, how he handles moving on to the next part of the progression. To me, it's a lot about hearing them in the huddle and how they communicate with their teammates. When things get going faster, are they panicking or does their voice have a calmness to it that settles the other 10 guys around? Duggan? Hey, Joe, uh, just curious how much, you know, moving inside today impacted practice and what would you think about the way the guys came out there to the last couple of periods? Look, it's sudden change. You know, we had lightning. You know, it's the only thing that's going to ever put us inside is lightning. So we had to move in. We go right to it. The guys understand there's never a weather situation. We have to go inside. We just continue with practice and we move along. Sometimes it alters a little bit. We have to go from two-spot drills to one-spot drills. And we try to find a way to, you know, maybe lengthen the period slightly pick up the tempo so we can get everybody their reps. Um, that's really the biggest hindrance right there. But the second it cleared out, we got outside as fast as we could. And this is sort of a random question, but I feel like I've noticed some of the defensive backs, they have like tennis balls or something like taped to their hands. I mean, I, I assume that might be to not grab, but I don't want to assume. So is that, what's the, what's the reason behind that? 
Yeah, to be honest with you, we're teaching them not to hold. You know, we're not going to accept penalties. So we'll find any little trick we can to go ahead and teach them. Nice. Art. Hey, Joe. Hey, Art. Just wanted to ask you about, um, I mean, obviously things got a little heated there with Lorenzo and, and Evan. Uh, maybe not so much how you wanted to see how they reacted, but how everybody else, how the entire team reacted. That's really the first time that we've seen a situation like that in, in camp so far. How, how did you see things play out? And, you know, I don't know if pleased is the right word, but the fact that not, no one else really got involved, it seemed to uh, calm down pretty quickly. No, I think our players understand the emphasis and the importance of how we have to practice and how it carries over into games. We've talked at length in team meetings about, you know, why we're not fighting on the field. And there's a number of reasons. But, you know, probably the most obvious important is it's a penalty in the game. You, you throw a punch in the game, you're thrown out of the game. It's going to be a fine. It's going to be a penalty for the team, and you don't get to play anymore. You know, those guys got into a little bit just a heating, grabbing scuffle today. You know, the teammates got over there to break it up. Obviously, they're frustrated with the competition. But you know what? They handled it the right way. They're hugging and kissing after practice. They put it behind them, and, you know, like brothers, they'll move on. It's more to be smiling and laughing at each other. Jordan? Hey, Joe. What's going on? Hey, Jordan. Uh, I'm curious, what have you seen from Nick Gates? Obviously, that you guys, you know, have a center competition. You've talked about this before. And now Spencer Pulley is, you know, got banged up yesterday. Now he's sitting on the side. So what have you seen from Nick so far? You know, again, with a lot of our guys, is level of improvement. But, uh, you know, Nick's a guy that we got here. We knew he had a lot of flexibility position-wise. He had to learn the center position. I think he's definitely a guy who's, you know, just locked in to doing everything he could to give himself a chance. He's improved, you know, in the short amount of time being able to be together. Uh, he shows a good command out there in terms of understanding the offense, communicating the calls. Um, and he's got a toughness about him you like inside, you know. And Spencer brings the same quality. Spencer's a tough dude. He's a smart guy. You know, he can run the show out there. He understands – what we're trying to do. He understands what the defense is trying to do. He's a great communicator on the line of scrimmage and in the huddle. Both those guys have done a tremendous job competing. Where would you say that competition is right now? Scratch even. Okay, Rock, and then this will be the last one. Joe, I, I know some quarterbacks uh, like to get that first hit out of the way in the preseason game. Is, is there any thought at all to uh, taking the red jersey off for of Daniel at some point before yep. uh, September 14th? You know, we've talked about it. I mean, with quarterbacks, you want to go ahead and be calculated in how you start banging them around. Uh, I don't think we're going to throw him in any, you know, you know, Royal Rumbles or anything like that. But, you know, at some point we'll pop his pads a little bit in a controlled environment. You know, maybe that's with, you know, a young guy who understands just kind of, you know, hitting him a little bit. But I'm not in a hurry to go ahead and just beat the hell out of him, Tom. But, you know, at some point we'll prepare his body for he may take in the first game. Okay. And, the, and the other question was it, it looked like um... – Peppers had to leave again today. It seemed like the same issue, cramping. Is there, is there something that could be done there? You know what? I know we were rotating a lot of guys. He was playing throughout practice. I have to check. I mean, he's a guy that sweats a good bit. Uh, we obviously put a lot on our guys today. So I'll check and see how, where he was on the, on the back end. He was in good spirits after practice. We were talking. So uh, I'll check on when we get back to the locker room. But I don't have an answer for you right there, Tom. Thanks.